the remarkable story of a young woman's escape from North Korea. In order to protect me, I saw my mother raped. Defectors shared new details of the regime's brutality. You can't even imagine it. The North Korean regime denied this. Kim Jong-un is a murderer. The dictatorship is so incensed by what she's saying that they want her tracked down. Pyongyang fired back with angry rhetoric. Outright calling her a liar. Korea will strike a lethal blow. Saying the wrong thing could execute me. Regurgitate the regime's propaganda. Kim Jong-un is the embodiment of our destiny. It becomes impossible to determine what's real and what's staged. Only people who escape can give us the truth. I escaped when I was 13 years old. The fact that she survived, it's nothing short of a miracle. One to two million people died, with dead bodies filling the streets. One of the worst human rights crises of our time. It only took three generations. Violating every conceivable human right. Deliberate use of starvation as a means of control. I didn't know what freedom was. I escaped for a bowl of rice. How did you escape when you were just 13 years old? Growing up in North Korea, my father was sent to labor camp for engaging in illegal trading. He was selling clocks, sugar, rice, and later copper to feed us. The government just arrested them, tortured them, and sent them to prison, and he went to labor camp for 10 years. We are starving, but I could see the lights from China at night. And I wondered if I go where the light is, I might be able to find a bowl of rice. So it was the only option for us. My mother and I found a lady who told us they can send us to China. And we climbed the mountain, we crossed the frozen river. We cannot just cross anywhere because the border guards are watching us and they will shoot us. We bribe the border guards, but we cannot bribe every guard because 100 meters, guards, 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 and the dog was like barking. So somebody who would shoot us from there. I thought I was gonna be shot. It was very scary. And we luckily we didn't get shot. We made it to China. When I escaped to China, we found out that we had to be sold to live in China. You were sold to a man and you really resisted giving in to him for a long time, physically fighting, yeah. in order to survive. Yeah, that was the last moment I remember I was being a kid and I had to be a dart. My mother was being sold for $65. I was sold for over $200. I was more expensive than her because I was virgin and I was young because I was 13. And the man who bought me, he was a broker, but he told me if I become his mistress, he would do by my mom, by my father. And I thought if I sacrifice myself, I can see my family again. And that's how I became mistress. My father was around 45 years old. He'd been tortured so much in prison camp in North Korea. In China, we could not go to hospital to treat him. So he had to just die. Now thinking that I never realized how young he was. Until he was dying, he told me, that you have to one thing promise me, that you are never going to kill yourself. Because he told me, life is a gift that I should never give up. My father died, and I had to bury his ashes in the middle of my mountain, and I was 14 years old at that time. In 2009, my mother and I were rescued by Christian missionaries who led us to Mongolian border with China. And then we walked and crossed the Gobi Desert. The moment I stood on the desert, sand just straight, is endless, endless. And I felt only the stars were with me. It was 2009 and it was end of February or beginning of March. So it was freezing cold. 
So we were crossing the wire fences and we were crawling and walking and running and we followed the compass and then later we could not use compass so we followed the stars north and I was so so thankful because I met somebody in the desert said, thank you thank you I was speaking Chinese say 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 and then we flew to South Korea the very first day when I got out from the resettlement center the happiest thing was having food and I remember how my father tortured and my father died without knowing even this kind of democracy exists in the world. He didn't even know this much food was available in the world. Now, I live in the United States as a free person. Thank you. I'm at Columbia University right now. I'm only 24 years old. I am married to American. I have a six-month-old son. Along my journey, I have seen the horrors that human can inflict on another. But I've also witnessed acts of tenderness and kindness and sacrifice in the worst imaginable circumstances. I know that it is possible to lose part of your humanity in order to survive. But I also know that the spark of human dignity is never completely extinguished and that given the oxygen of freedom and the power of love, it can grow again. Be free. From my experience, literally everything is possible. Now I'm here and that is why I believe in miracles. Nothing is forever in this world. And I say, we have every reason to be hopeful.